attendees now. Um, and for those that it's your first uh, webinar with us, welcome. Um, this has become a regular Thursday slot now. Um, so it's great to have you all here. Um, yeah, and today we've got an exciting uh, and quite unique solution that we're going to be exploring. Um, if I just adjust my camera, and I can show you the unit itself, the Tactilo. And before I do that, um, just a few quick notes on the session. So uh, I was explaining earlier before most of you arrived. Um, believe it or not, um, the technology uh, has, has uh, caused a few hiccups uh, this morning. Um, so in order for me to demonstrate some of the features, I'll be showing a couple of videos uh, instead of actually doing a live demonstration. Uh, I hope that's okay. Um, the Taptilo unit that I'm using is an older unit. Um, therefore, the connection, the Bluetooth connection, um, isn't as, as strong. So therefore, um, yeah, I wouldn't be able to demonstrate a couple of the features. So um, it's we can absolutely explore you know, all the other features there. Um, it's just the teaching mode and the Braille music um, are two really exciting features. And I want to make sure that they're sort of demonstrated. So we're going to be using a couple of videos. Um, but apart from that, we're all good to go. Excellent. So I'll just uh, change the view here. Great. So before I uh, show you the tap to uh, I'll give you some background on the uh, on the Taptilo and the, the company that made it. So the Taptilo is a smart braille learning device, uh, and the company behind um, the Taptilo is a company called Ofa Tech, and they're a social enterprise based in Seoul in South Korea. Um, now they create innovative technology solutions um, that generally. Um, for the blind and visually impaired. Um, now, as you know, um, basic literacy is, is really important in our daily lives to advance careers and education. And of course, this is exactly the same for anybody who is blind. Um, now, learning how to read and write Braille at an early age, we know is key to, to lifelong literacy in this you know, this is really important to fulfilling uh, career uh, prospects and, you know, and to unleashing potential. But the problem that Ofatech uh, encountered um, with Braille and education was that Braille isn't always received uh, in, the, in, the, in the way that it should be. Um, so they asked teachers and parents and students, uh, and they found that the biggest underlying problems were that there simply aren't enough teachers to cover all of the students' needs, and there weren't enough up-to-date tools and resources for Braille education. For example, a lot of students um, are still learning Braille using tennis balls and egg boxes, for instance. So Ofatech decided to create a device that would provide better resources for education, hence the Tactilo. So, I'll just change my camera for you so you can see it. There we go. So this is the Taptilo. Now, I'm also going to minimize this screen so I can see it. There we go. Great. So uh, this is it. This is the world's first smart Braille education device. Um, and the idea with the Tapsolo is to make braille learning engaging and fun for young students, but also for an older audience as well. Uh, the Tapsolo isn't just aimed at, 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 at young children. Um, you know, there is a, a wide range of, of users that, that can that can um, yeah that can get involved with with the with the Tapsolo. Now the key areas. Um, that really sort of make the Taptilo stand out, if you like, is that it's beginner friendly. Um, now, the problem with some existing resources is that there isn't a lot of tools that are built for beginners, which means that learning Braille might seem intimidating. 
So that's why the Taptillo has these large braille cells, for instance. They're five times bigger than the standard braille cell. Um, and it also, it looks, uh, it looks friendly. You know, it, it can be used, like I said, it can be used from people ranging from very young up to elderly people who might have weaker tactile abilities, for instance. Another uh, key feature is that it has a self-guided uh, learning system um, that requires minimal supervision. Um, and it's possible because Tactilo provides audio guidance. It provides interactive games that students can follow along at their own pace. And the interactive content of the Tactilo, it provides multi-sensory feedback instantly so that it provides a dynamic learning experience. And then last but not least, um, um, the Taptilo also connects to um, an app on your Android or iOS phone. Um, now this app allows the, the user to, or the teacher, to easily customize and integrate, um, sorry, communicate with, um, yeah, with the existing teaching methods. And most importantly, by using the app, it allows the teachers and the parents who might not be experts in Braille to be able to provide effective guidance. Okay, so those are four sort of key areas which really make the, the Tactilo um, paired with the, the, the phone app that really stand out as a unique um, piece of Braille learning equipment. Now, um, I touched on the, the large Braille cells and you know you might be thinking why use large Braille cells and is it effective? Um, and then now a, a study was published in the, in the British Journal of Educational Psychology and the, the authors concluded that initially training children with large braille, it actually leads to the best subsequent learning of standard braille. And we've seen that over the last few years, um, Taptilo has really helped to engage learners um, so that they continue to learn standard braille more effectively once they've finished with the Taptilo's large braille blocks. Good, so the, the, the target audience really for the, uh, for the, the, the Taptilo, as I said, it, it, it can be used for young and old, um, but obviously, uh, as you can imagine, it's, it's, it's heavily used within education. So a target audience within education, for instance, would be pre-braille students who are three years and older, um, obviously the parents, who might have varying braille knowledge, QTVIs like yourselves, and people who also maybe uh, maybe uh, they may become blind in, in later life and they want to learn braille. Okay, so those are the end users that we'd be aiming this um, towards. Then obviously the buyers. Um, we've got schools, organisations, local governments, and distributors such as Sight and Sound, for instance. Um, now. Ophitech also did a, a survey um, based on all of these um, customers, the end users and the buyers, and 95% of the, the Taptilo users, whether it's um, the end users or the buyers, they, they, they came back with, 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 uh, with feedback that, that suggested the Taptilo was easy to use, it was fun, useful, and also unique. So that was 95% of their, of their custom there. So that's a bit of background about the Taptilo, okay, and the company that made it, why they made it, um, and sort of the angle that they're coming from, okay. So let's get started with the actual Taptilo itself. So this is it. It's a really neat, sort of uh, very contemporary, um, but also quite minimal looking unit, okay. Um, now, if I just talk you around the, the user interface on the front here, We've got the nine large braille blocks here with the six braille dots that uh, can be pushed up and down. And we'll look at the braille blocks uh, in a little bit more detail in a second. You've got nine braille blocks here. Okay, now they are referred to as braille blocks with the Taptilo. Um, and they are mirrored by the nine, the nine cell refreshable braille display on the front here. Okay. Uh, then we've got some three uh, tactile buttons here. Okay, these are the only tactile buttons um, that the student or the teacher will, will use. Okay, um, 
we'll also go into more detail about how they, they can be used as well. Um, you've got the uh, power button on the, the right hand end of the, uh, of the Tactilo here. And on the back of the unit, we have a, a, a volume switch here. You can toggle between three different levels. And we've got a, a mini USB um, connection. That's for the charging port, okay? Now on this end of the unit, okay, because this is an older unit, okay, there is no ports at the minute, okay, but um, on the newer units, um, there is a headphone jack, okay, so the, the student can, can have the discretion of using headphones as well. Um, and then also on this end as well, there's a speaker just here, so that's where all the audio output will come from, okay. And that is it, okay, there's no other buttons or ports or connections or anything on the interface, okay, it's very straightforward, okay. Um, Good. So if I just scroll down here. Great. So as I said, we've got um, three tactile buttons here uh, on the interface. Um, now these can be used um, in a couple of different ways. Okay. So we've got uh, short press commands and we've got long press commands. Okay. Um, and again, um, you know, they, they, they can be used in combination with each other, which will um, allow you to access certain features as well. And we'll, we'll, as I said, we'll look at those in more detail as we run through the features, okay? Good. All right then. Oh, one thing I did miss, sorry, is on the Taptolo just here, we've got an LED display, okay? Now that, that will tell you the uh, battery status, okay? There's a, there's a LED display there that when I turn it on, you'll see it light up, okay? There we go. Okay, so just take a couple of seconds to warm up. The battery life is really, really strong with the tactile as well. Um, you'll get 15 hours continuous use. For teaching mode, pair with tactile application. For self-study mode, press the circle button. Okay, good. So she's already talking to us. She's uh, telling us that uh, for teaching mode, pair with the app, and for self-study mode, basically carry on um, so that's how it works okay uh, the teaching mode requires you to connect the the um, the tap to load to the app via Bluetooth and self-study mode is exactly as it is as it says and that's what we're going to look at now okay so this is a really useful um, feature for the student okay it allows them to take the tap to load home with them um, and they can practice their basic braille learning skills you know, away from school, away from class, um, with the parents, um, and there's a number of activities and games uh, for, for them to engage with outside of the classroom, okay? So, we're in self-study mode by default. As you turn on the Taptilo, you're ready to go with self-study mode. Now, just a, a little um, shortcut just while we're here. I've just turned the uh, Taptilo on. If I want to check the battery status, if the student wants to check the battery status, obviously they can't see the braille um, the LED display there. If I hold down the right arrow and the circle button together. Enough battery. Okay, it tells me the battery status. Okay, so that's just a, an example of the, uh, how you can use the keys in combination with each other. Okay, good. Now, before I go on and explain the, the self-study mode activities, okay, I just want to explain a little bit about the writing styles that, that the student and the teacher can use with the tactile. So as I explained before, on top here, we've got nine large braille blocks, okay? Now, each one of these obviously represents the braille cell that's corresponding underneath there. Um, and each cell, okay, has the six dots, okay? You've got dots one to six, just as you would normally. Okay, now it's, it's quite important, okay, to, uh, to make sure that the student um, knows and can tell the, the difference between the front and the back of the block, okay. Uh, the main reason for this is if the student, for instance, popped the, the, the cell, the block, sorry, back onto the tactile and it was the wrong way around, the tactile wouldn't be able to read the dots, it wouldn't be able to read the braille, okay. Now, the best way to distinguish this for the student is on the front side of the, uh, the braille block here, 
the top edge here is is very smooth okay um, if I was to flip it over um, on the same edge there's a bit of a lip there's a lip there quite a distinctive lip okay and also um, it's probably best if I use this block um, if I was to pop the, uh, the block down on the on the tactilo okay there's no magnetic pull from the tactile okay with that okay so it's just it's quite loose okay but if i pop the brayer block down the, the correct way okay there's a very distinct magnetic pull from the uh, from the tactile okay just like that okay so the student can distinguish the the front of the brayer block and the back of the brayer block by running their fingers across the top there okay now let's just look at the dots briefly um the idea behind the design of this is that the student would hold the, uh, the brayer block with their thumbs pressed on the front here and then they've got their fingers round the back in order to push the dots up and then they use their thumbs to, to push the dots down. The idea there is is that it's exactly the same as a Perkins keyboard okay so um, you've got your thumbs here and then obviously as we know with a with a regular Perkins keyboard we've got dots one two three four five six okay and it's exactly the same with the prayer block, okay? You're holding it with your fingers there, with your thumbs, and then you can push the dots with the corresponding finger, okay? So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? So it's, um, it's, it mirrors the Perkins style keyboard, okay? Perfect. So, great. Now the writing modes that we discussed. Now, the, the Tactile it, is obviously made in, in, in Korea. And it's heavily used in America. Um, now, the the Tactilo allows the teacher and the student to use two writing modes. There's common writing mode, which um, we are most familiar with in, in, in this country. So I'm told from my colleagues and and, and QTVI um, partners and friends. Um, and the the alternative is this is the um, slate and stylus. Uh, uh, writing mode, which again, I'm told is, is more popular with an older generation of Braillists. Um, so I'm not going to touch on, on Slate and Stylus um, too much in today's session. We're going to stick with, with the common writing style. Um, but as I said, there is the option to use Slate and Stylus um, with the tap to low. Um, but yeah, but I'm, I'm, I assume most of us will, will be sticking with, with common. So um, so with the common writing style, for instance, the direction of reading is the same as the direction of writing, okay? So it's from left to right, okay? And the position of the dots are exactly the same. You know, you've got one to six. Um, yeah, and that's exactly the same for reading and writing. And as I said, we've, we've looked at, at holding the blocks um, as we would a, a Perkins style keyboard there. Good. Now... Before I go into self-study mode, Angus, do you want to have a brief pause for questions, or do you want? To... Yes, yes, please. Um, we have many questions queued, which you'll yes. be very happy to hear. Yeah, um, I will just go just um, based off uh, what you were just talking about most recently to begin with. So um, I have two questions. Yep. Uh, one from Andy and one from Penny. Uh, thank you for your questions, Andy and Penny. Um, so they're both related to the same thing, which is effectively how uh, easy or, or light are these dots to push out on, on the uh, detachable braille uh, tiles there? Um, okay. Do you need Good. fine motor skills in order to, to be secure? And would, would a three-year-old be able to do this? Yeah, so it's a really good question. So the... Um... The, the actual pushing of the dot there, it does require the the, the user to be you know a little firm. Um, but as I said, the um, the the the, the, the is is you know marketed towards you know children as young as three. Um, so you know they shouldn't struggle with with pushing the, the braille dots um, up and down there. Um, again, the question regarding somebody with with um, you know issues around their motor skills um yeah that it it very much depends um i mean it is a very tactile piece of kit okay you have to lift the the braille cells you have to be able to um so yeah it, it may require um you know a certain level of of, of motor skills with the with the handling um but uh, you know again they're very light cells they're very light and they're very sensitive 
um, you know, um, it's yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's sort of a very child friendly piece of kit there. So they're not they're not um, not sort of uh, yeah, uh, trying to make anything difficult for anybody. Okay, that's great. Um, uh, just just a quick follow up to that question um, from Andy. Um, are there any additional blocks? Uh, are the additional blocks easily purchase, purchasable? Um, if, for example, a block went missing over time. Yeah, good question. Yeah, so what they've started to do now actually is with the uh, with the the more up to date version of, of the um, top so is that you get an extra block um, with the with the unit. Okay, so you get a spare block in case in case one of them go missing. Um, in terms of purchasing um, extra blocks, again, yes. That is something you can do uh, either directly from a distributor or from from uh, Taptilla themselves. Um, it's, it's not it's not a problem. That's great. Uh, thanks, Sam. So um, just one more question on this uh, subject while we're here. Um, Manish has, has asked, um, would, would a blind person be able to put the blocks back in the right place? Yeah, again. Yeah, good, good question. Um, as, I, as I was saying earlier, there's a a very strong magnetic pull from the uh, once you've got the block in the hands there uh, there's a very strong magnetic pull from the actual uh, base of the the block which clips very precisely into its um, positioned um, section um, so you know they are making it as, as sort of user friendly as possible in that sense um, but again I think it, it would certainly take some um, some practice um you know just to sort of navigate themselves around the around the unit um but yeah i i you know i certainly the feedback i've had is that there, there's you know there's not too many issues with locating the the blocks and where they should go great okay um so we've got a question from chris um and chris has asked uh, how long do you see the learning journey on the on the Taptillo? how long do you see the learning journey Yes, yeah, so I, I think that maybe refers to um, the, the learning journey itself and, and how long it would take someone to 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 be able to pick uh, up Braille using the tablet. Oh, I see. I see. OK, yeah, thanks, Chris. Yeah, so it very much um, it, it, the, the the longevity of the um, of the tactile, you know, for instance, just to find the cost of it, let's say, for a school, um, it, I think it's easily justifiable because I think the the tactilo can last a student from very very early you know pre braille you know up until you know you can start learning contractions with the tactilo um so you can start adding more advanced features um more advanced like i say more advanced contractions and and you know so it's not just the pre braille it's not just going to be used for a couple of years you know you've got a good amount of longevity in terms of the educational value um with the Tactilla. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it, it certainly, I mean, I think once the student gets to the point where they're comfortable with contractions, you can increase the length of the words to a certain point. I mean, we've only got nine cells here. Um, but yeah, and then obviously they may want to then move on to, to, to regular size bra braille cells and, and um, other devices. But there's definitely a good amount of, of uh, life in this for a student, for sure. Excellent. Thank you, Sam. So uh, just a quick follow up from Anisha on her question about the um, blind people being able to put the blocks back in the right place. Um, do these blocks have to be in the same order or can those blocks be put in any order there? Yeah, again, they can be put in any order they want. OK, there's no there's no uh, set place for these blocks. The only um, sort of, you know, uh, definite rule is that um, they have to be placed um, the correct way. This way, the reason why um, you know, they can be used this way around, and that is for the slate and stylus uh, writing style, okay, which we predominantly don't use in this country. Um, so that's the only um, only sort of rule, if you like. Um, but the order um, can be can be any any order they like. Great. Okay. Uh, thank you. So um, I've got a, another good question here from uh, Johanna. Um, thank you for your question. So she says, uh, how um, robust is the unit um considering it, it may be used by four-year-olds in a nursery setting yeah another good question so it's um there isn't any sort of reinforced um 
sort of buffering on the end. Um, so I mean, if it was dropped, then I mean, yeah, I mean, like any 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 piece of kit, it 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 may be, um, you know, it may be breakable. Um, but in terms of how sort of the weight of it, it's it's pretty. You know, it's not too heavy, but it's got some weight to it. Um, I'd say maybe I don't know, maybe a pound, maybe maybe a couple of pounds. It's it's not too heavy. Um, but yeah, it's. I'd say if it, if it maybe fell off the table, you 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 know you might find that it picks up a few scratches. But it's um, yeah, it's fairly robust, um, and the blocks themselves are very. Um, everything's well made. Everything's really well manufactured. It's not. It doesn't feel sort of cheap or look cheap. You know, it's got a really nice finish to it, um, and everything's sort of really neat and, and and well finished. So you know, in terms of it sort of breaking or, or whatnot. Um, you know, it, it should be fine unless, okay. you, yeah, it should be fine. That's great. Um, so uh, we'll just do a couple more and then, and then we'll move on because you might actually touch on some of these, these points further in your um, presentation. Um, so uh, Lorraine has asked, um, can you hire forward slash borrow this like you can the Mount Batten? And does it, does it also have a, does it come with a warranty? Yeah, good. So, um, so with a lot of our products, we we we, we tend to um, to sort of shy away from the um, the hiring. Um, in the past, we've we've had experiences where equipment solutions will come back to us that that then aren't uh, resellable. Um, however, all these things are negotiable, um, so we can talk about that if you'd like to. Um, you know, after the session, um, we only actually tend to uh, keep. Uh, one or possibly two demonstration units um, of this. So we don't have massive of these uh, on hand to send out for highest. But, um, you know, again, it's something we can discuss. Uh, in terms of the warranty, um, you've got a two-year warranty on this, I believe. Okay. Um, and that's with us directly. Um, uh, and you've also got lifetime technical support with us, with Sight and Sound directly as well. Okay, excellent. That's great. Thank you, Sam. Um, and then I think just we'll just go for one more question, um, which was from Sarah Brown. Thank you for this. And she says, uh, how does this compare to the Annie by, by Thinkabell Labs? Ah, that's that's a good question. That's one. That's a piece of equipment I'm not familiar with, um, but I'm happy to do some uh, to do some research. I'm always up for, for learning about uh, new pieces so i'm happy to store that one and uh i can find your details and get back to you if that's okay that's that's yeah no, i think that's that's great um yeah. hopefully that's okay sarah um yeah we're, we're very happy to do a, a comparison work up a comparison for you on that yeah if that's what you'd like um and uh i, I, do, I do actually just see chris just just put something in the chat there I'm, I'm not sure if that's related to the to the annie by think about labs chris you might have to just clarify that but he, he speaks about purchasing one um, which didn't come with a UK plug when it was shipped. Uh, um, okay. Okay. I'm not sure if he's if he's talking about the Taptilla or the or the Annie there. Um, I'm sure uh, Chris right. will will uh, <laughs> clarify for us. Um, that'd be great. Um, but yeah. but yeah, um, we've got. I'll, I'll queue up. Um, ah, oh, that was for the Taptilla. Okay. Um, so it was it wasn't shipped with a UK plug. But um, if right. anything that comes from Sight and Sound will come with a UK plug. Um, uh, if it didn't, then that was that was a mistake, and that's something that we can get rectified for you. Um, but uh, yeah, just just the last point was um, just on the on the blocks themselves, uh, the detachable blocks. Are how hygienic are they? Are they are they washable? Well, they're com they're, there's no electronics uh, based in the in the actual block itself. It's all plastic, um, so you can absolutely wipe them down. Um, you know, you can spray them with uh, yeah with with uh, antibacterial spray for instance um i'd probably stay clear from spraying the actual unit again it's, it's certainly wipeable um but yeah but it's um yeah the actual block itself certainly they're certainly um sprayable and wipeable that's great sam and then just just one more on that did, did, did the dots ever stick do you find um I, certainly not from what i found there's a they're very um it's a very definite sort of really clean motion with the uh, 
I mean, I can only really describe it like, or compare it to sort of Lego, uh, well, maybe not even Lego, to be honest. The way that Lego connects, um, it's, it's, it's really definite, it's really defined uh, and sort of really clear for the student to, and you can hear the click as well. It's, it's really sort of really obvious. Um, so, but, but no sticking from my experience, no. Excellent. All right, Sam, that's great. So thank you everyone for all your questions. Um, we will stop at another point during the session to, to answer more of your questions. So do, do keep them coming. I'll queue them up um, and, and make sure that everyone gets their, their questions answers. Um, and, and thank you for, for sharing your, your knowledge and your experiences in, in the chat as well. That's, that's very helpful. Um, I mean, Liz has, has shared something about, about the Annie there, which is, which is very interesting. And uh, Claire Watson has also just shared uh, something regarding to um, the UK plug, um, which you might find in interesting, Chris. She said that she, she spoke to the team um, and uh, they, 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 they uh, will get one sent out to her uh, ASAP. So, um, that's great. I just I just thought I'd uh, voice that one because it seems I think Claire you've, you've you've sent that directly to us rather than to to everyone um, on the chat. Um, all right, Chris and Claire are working together. I see. <laughs> uh, sorry for that. Okay, brilliant. Um, well, thank you for that update. Um, I will hand it back to you now, Sam. Then to just continue with the uh, with the tapilo. Great. Thanks, Angus, and thanks everyone for your questions. Um, sorry if we can't get around everyone. Um, obviously, we're, we're, we're limited on time, but um, we'll push on and hopefully we can get everything into the session. Great. So next up, we've got the, the, the self-study mode, okay? Um, this is one of the two um, study modes that, that, that the Taptalo um, allows. We've got self-study and we've got teaching, okay? So self-study, as I said earlier, is, uh, is very it's independent. It allows a student to work independently at home or with his with his or her parents um, away from the classroom to brush up on their skills. Now, with um, self-study mode, um, the, the, the student has five different activities that they can choose from, okay? They've got read, they've got trace and write, dictation, write, and game, okay? Now, I'm just gonna look at a couple of those um, today. We're not gonna um, explore all, all five of those. Um, but for instance, um, within read, trace and write and dictation activities, you've got four topics that you can choose from. Okay, so you can choose from alphabet, numbers, short words and long words. Okay, so I'm going to choose uh, the read activity to start with. Self-study mode. To scroll through the menu. Read. And I'm going to choose short words. Trace and write. Listen to the number, alphabet, short word. Great. Shoe. Great. So it's already given me my first word. Okay. I've entered short words there and it's giving me shoe. Now, if you can see this, hopefully, you can see on the tap tiller here, we've got uh, shoe has been brailled on the display there. Okay. Obviously, we're in read at the moment. Okay. So this as it says, just allows the student to run their hand across the braille there and read the word, okay? And then once they're ready, they can press the circle button here. Meet. And it moves on to the next word, okay? And it also sounds the word for them as well, okay? Um, now, a couple of little, um, yeah, useful notes here as well. If I, if I hold down the, the right arrow, Okay, so it'll sound out the spelling of the word. If I hold down the left arrow, Meet. it will just sound the word. Okay, it will repeat the word. So you can repeat the word or repeat the spelling. And then once the students finish reading the word, press the circle button. Art. Okay, and it'll braille the next, uh, the next um, word for me, for instance. So we're in uh, short words at the moment, but obviously you can change that to long words. You can change that to alphabet or numbers, okay? Um, excellent. So once I've done with the, the read program, for instance, to, to come out of this uh, activity, I can just hold down the circular button for two seconds. Okay. Read. Listen to the word and read it on Braille display. I'm going to come out of that again. Self-study mode. And I want to find trace and write. Menu. Okay. 
me. Okay. Trace and write. Trace and write. Great. Match the blocks. I want to find short words again. Number. Alphabet. Short words. Perfect. Oh. So we're in uh, trace and write now, and we've selected short words again. Okay, now this is exactly the same as the read uh, activity. The student read the, reads the word on the braille display there, but now they need to trace the, the words using the blocks. Okay, so I pick the block up. Okay, I've, I've run my fingers across the, the braille cell there, and using the block, I can braille it. Okay. And then once the student uh, is happy with their uh, with their answer, they then hit the uh, enter button. Okay. Great. And it gives them all audio feedback that 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 was correct. Okay. And then it moves on automatically to the next word. Okay. Um, now, for instance, if I got this wrong, for instance, if the student got this wrong, and I hit the uh, enter button. Shall we try again? Okay, so it'll it'll tell you, uh, it will notify you that, that, that it's not quite right, and it'll give you another go. Okay, um, much more polite than than my teachers were. <laughs> um, it's uh, yeah, it very very constructively tells you to have another go. Um, so it's really useful. Okay, and again, the student can can have the word uh, reread. It can have it spelled um, using the arrows there. Okay, and when I'm done. Um, we can come out of this application by holding down the circular button. Great, so that's trace and write and read. Uh, those are two of the activities that you can use in self-study mode. Um, there are other, other activities that, that, that I'll quickly touch on that won't go into too much detail. You, there is a game mode as well, which is really, uh, it's really quite it's quite fun it's really useful there's there's two different games you can play in game mode there's word scramble which is for uncontracted braille okay um, and as it suggests you have to unscramble the letters and then you have to spell the word using the the, the braille blocks um, and then there's there's a ueb quiz okay so this is for contracted braille okay um, now in, in this game your challenge is to convert the word from uncontracted braille to contracted um, so there's a couple of different games there that really sort of, uh, you know, they can really test the, 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 the student's abilities, you know, ranging from basic uncontracted braille to more complex contracted. Okay. Great. Now, um, before we move on from, from, uh, self-study mode, um, I just want to tell you about a few important buttons um, within self-study. Um, so, as I explained earlier, there's only three um, only three tactile buttons there. Um, using a combination of them can allow you to enter certain features and whatnot. Um, yeah, and we've looked at the, the short press and the long press for these uh, for these buttons. So, when we uh, long press, for instance. Um, yeah, we've looked at we've looked at short press, but when we when we long press, okay, the left arrow for two seconds. Um, as I said earlier, this allows you to to listen to the word again. The right arrow will will spell the word again for you, um, but this only applies uh, for for words, okay, not for for numbers or the alphabet, okay. This is just just for for any any words of varying difficulty. Correct. Now you can change the braille type, okay, within the activities, okay. You can change from from uncontracted to contracted, okay. So, for instance, we're in um, trace and write at the moment. Um, now, if I wanted to change the the word at the moment, it's it's uncontracted. If I wanted to change to contracted, okay, I have to hold these two buttons down here together, okay, the left and right arrows together. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. So now that's converted it um, to contracted. Okay. On the braille display here, there's only three cells that are uh, available. Okay. Um, this temporarily changes the braille type. Okay. Um, if I want to change the braille type by default, 
okay i can press down the left arrow and the circle button together change to ueb mode okay and that's saying ueb mode meaning contracted braille okay so i'll press internal and the the tactile will reboot okay. self-study mode okay to scroll through the menu read okay so now if i go into trace and write trace and write match the block short words long words go to long words for instance street okay now now street there has been brailled in the braille display automatically in contracted braille there okay i've changed the the, the braille type by default okay um so and it's worth noting as well it's a little confusing the way that tactile word this um now they do refer to ueb mode being contracted braille and normal mode meaning uncontracted braille now they are aware of this that, that that for uk users it might be a little confusing and they are planning to change this in future updates um but uh yeah, at the moment, I assume because it's heavily used in America and, and, and Asia. Um, good. So that, in a nutshell, is self-study mode. Okay. Um, now, oh, one last thing, sorry, that I did forget to mention with the button combinations is you can, there's two different voice types that you can choose from with the tap solo. There's, there's Anna, which is the, the, the character Anna, or there's Diana. Um, Diana is default. Okay, that's that's the, the default uh, setting. If you can change it to Anna, which I'll do now by pressing all the buttons together. Switch to Anna. Okay, press enter. It will reboot again in a second. Yeah, there we go. So Anna is uh, the second voice type, and this is aimed. Self-study mode. She's. Scroll through the I'm going to mute her. So Anna is aimed at more younger younger users. Okay, because they add things like animal noises. Um, and it's it's just a more animated voice. Um, she's very very happy, <laughs> very very positive, um, which may grate on you after a while. So you may you may want to return to default with Diana. Um, but no, Anna's great for, for young kids. She, it's a very sort of kid uh, ch child friendly um, approach. Um, good. So that's that's self study mode. Now, I'm, I'm conscious of time on this, but we can stop for questions if you like. Yes, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be as quick as possible if we can with, with these. Yeah. Um, we've got a, a couple of good questions queued up again. Um, just again, just just on on what you were just talking about there. So um, uh, Carol has asked. Um, she's saying she knew, she assumes that the numbers are UEB and not Nemeth. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah. All right. Thank you for that. And then um, I had one more question from Carol. Uh, oh yes, you've actually already answered that, which was whether you can uh, set it to contracted Braille or, or to uncontracted Braille. But uh, yeah, you can. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. You can by default or temporarily change um, within within the word as well. So if you're in a uh, an application like like uh, Trace and Write, um, you can actually temporarily change the word from being displayed in contracted, uh, sorry, uncontracted to contracted, um, and vice versa. Or you can set the whole unit from default um, to, to whether you want it contracted or uncontracted. Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, does it only come with those two voices? Or is there an English voice or accent? No. So at the moment, um, yeah, that 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 you, that that's the only choice you've got. Um, that is something that they're working on to 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 add to the unit. Um, you can request different languages, um, but that is something that you have to do by request. Um, at the moment. Um, this is only available in English or American English and uh, Korean, I believe. Okay, that's great. Uh, thanks for that question, Steph. Um, Jenny Blackmore would like to know, is it possible for the Taptillo to read out letter sounds instead of letter names? So uh, f phonetics, I believe, maybe? Yeah, that's a good question. And uh, um, at the moment, um, that's not a feature that they've added, uh, the phonetic um, soundings of the word um it's at the moment it's it's just able to to voice the, the lettering and then it can repeat the, the the full word for the student so yeah phonetics isn't something that they've 
uh, phonics isn't something that they've added yet. Okay, great. Um, so uh, I, I have a question from Andy. Um, is there a large bank of short words and are they added to the device in a random order? Yeah, exactly. So there's uh, the random bank of, of uh, letters, numbers, short words and long words. Um, and again, they're all shuffled randomly as the student cycles through. OK, and we're going to look at teaching mode in a second and you'll see the um, the extent of the, the word bank that's used. Um, and you can choose how that's shuffled um, or ordered, if you like. Okay, great. Um, and when you're doing the self-study, Manisha would like to know, um, would it tell you the dot numbers to press or read? No. So there is no guidance in terms of, um, yeah, in terms of the, the, the dot numbers. Or if you do get a, um, a word wrong, it won't advise you as to what dot or what cell, for instance. It does ask, it does require the student to very, you know, become very tactile and to, to figure it out purely by, by touch. And obviously, some assistance with the teachers there, but, um, but no, there's no guidance in terms of dots. Okay, and then uh, just also on that self-study mode, Chris has asked, um, so rather than pressing cells one to six, you are depressing the unrequired dots. Is that correct? Rather than pressing, oh, I see what you mean. Um, yeah, so rather than depressing the required dots, you're, yeah, you're depressing the um, unrequired dots. Yes. Yeah, that's what I think that's what we're saying. Yeah, so if I want to to braille the letter letter A, um, I would depress all the other dots that I don't need, and just leave, and just leave, leave the one the dot. One yeah, dot. yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, excellent. Yeah. Um, great, thanks, Chris. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Liz would like to know: Can you add specific words, i.e., a spelling list? Yeah, so we're going to move on to that now. It's a good segue. So we're, we're, we're that's Brilliant. only that's only in teaching mode. In, in self-study mode, all the, the letters uh, and words are, are preset. In teaching mode, you can start adding words. You can customize it. You can start adding favorites and your own playlists of words, if you like. Great. Okay, I'll I'll let you get onto that then. Uh, just one more question from Manisha. Um, is the length shorter than? Uh, is the length a bit shorter than? Then the keyboard, she's asking, I think. That. Uh, oh, oh, I see. The length of the, uh, yeah, yeah, good, good question. So I've got my keyboard here. Um, so you can sort of see a comparison, hopefully. Yeah, um, and um, it's, it's also asked the cost as well. It's almost, it's slightly shorter than a keyboard, than a standard QWERTY keyboard. Uh, and the cost um, at the moment um, is not, I don't want to misquote anybody. I believe it's twelve hundred pound, uh, excluding VAT. Um, let me just triple check that, Angus. Yeah. On. Come on. My internet's a little bit slow. Uh, I, I tell you what, you, you you carry on. That's the last question, and I'll just double it's check that one. Twelve nine five X VAT at the moment. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's twelve nine five. Good. Yeah. Thank you, Manisha. Yeah, and, uh, thanks, guys. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for the questions. Sam, I will let you continue, so, sir. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I know uh, we are short on time, so I'll, I'll, I'll try and be as swift as I can. Obviously, if you have to leave, then, then please, please do feel free. This will be recorded. Um, good. So we've got teaching mode next. Okay, now this is the app-based activity. Okay, this is where the, the teacher can get involved and communicate uh, with the student using the app and, and sort of customize activities for the student. And this requires you to actually pair the um, the tactile to, a, to an app on your phone via Bluetooth, okay? Now, if you didn't hear at the start of the session, we're having a few difficulties with this unit. It's an older unit. The Bluetooth is obviously a little bit temperamental today. It's not allowing me to connect. However, that's not the end of the world. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my phone screen to actually show you um, the functionality of the app. Okay, so if I just go on to here for a second, share screen. So I'll broadcast for a second. So what we've got here is great. 
Now, um, you can, guys, there's a little tab in the middle of the screen where you can actually resize um, my uh, Tactilo camera, which is here, and the, uh, the screen share with the phone there. You can actually resize either one depending on how you want to view it. Okay, just, just so you're aware. Um, good. So this is the, the first screen that you'll see on the, uh, the Tactilo app, okay? Actually, sorry, this is the second. The first screen, it will allow you to pair the, um, the device. At the moment, for whatever reason, it's not showing my, my Tactilo. So I'm not able to, um, to pair it. I assure you, <laughs> this morning, it was working fine. But anyway, as technology works. Um, but if this is an older unit. Uh, this is one of the original units. So it may just be a little bit simple. So this is the app, okay? Now we've got, uh, let me just have a look here. We've got, yeah, so we've got uh, a list of topics here that you can choose. You've got alphabet, okay? Um, you've got numbers, uh, words, and words from levels one to levels five, okay? Then we've got favorites, and we've got uh, music braille, okay? Which I'll briefly look at in a second, okay? Now, um, yeah, what's the, the, the sort of, the, how, how this works really then is with the, um, with the favorites and with the, the lists here, you can go into a, a word bank, for instance. So this is level four words. You've got quite a few complex words there. So between, okay, if I press on this star here, that will then add it to my favorites, okay, which is really useful. Your student can come back. It's, you, you know, favorite words for the student more challenging words that they need practice with, they can come back and access them later on, okay? Um, I can also create my own lists, okay? So if I go to Sam's list here, Sam's list, save. Okay, there's a little gingerbread man there. If I go in there and I want to add a word, avocado, I'm dyslexic. I think that's how you spell avocado. Uh, <laughs> and then I press okay. Um, now, because um, my uh, tactile isn't connected at the moment, I can't demonstrate live the um, yeah the, the the teaching mode pairing with my tactile, which is frustrating. I know. But if I was to press an avocado, for instance, okay, this is what we'd see on the app, and then avocado would be brailled on the tactile, okay, um, and then obviously depending on what activity we're in, at the moment you'll see at the top here there's a tab, okay. This allows you to choose the activity for the student, just like self-study mode, okay? So we can do trace and write, which is what we looked at lastly with self-study mode, uh, read, which we looked at first, and then listen and write, okay? Which again is very, very, very simple, very straightforward. Um, yeah, it would just, um, yeah, it would just give the student the audio, okay? There'd be no braille on the braille display, okay? So again, increasing the, um, difficulty for the student. Uh, and again, within the app, you can change between uncontracted and contracted, okay? Um, again, that will refresh on the Braille display, okay, for the for the student there. Um, and then the, the four buttons that you've got underneath the, uh, the, the the word there, obviously you can go to the previous word. The next one will, will spell the word again. The next one will sound the sound the word in full, and then you can move to the next word as well. Okay, now the, the bottom tab here, this is the uh, sort of the settings uh, menu, if you like, for the, for the teaching mode. Um, as we discussed earlier, you can shuffle the, uh, the word bank. Okay, so if I put that on there, that will then automatically shuffle. Um, auto continue uh, is, is quite useful. This will allow the Tapsolo to, yeah, it will automatically display the next word. Okay, so without, um, you having to prompt the, the app or anything, it will just carry on. Um, auto play voice is quite useful. Um, this is turned on by default. Um, so this the tap tool will read the word or letter um, as it's displayed in Braille. If it's turned off, um, it will only display the Braille. There'll be no audio. Um, so obviously this is useful for, for, for quizzing the student. Okay, they just have to, to feel the, the display rather than have it heard um, out loud for them. Um, great. So, yeah, that's good. Yeah, so we've got the, um, and then you've got slight and stylus at the bottom there, which I've got turned off, but again, that's the second, uh, 
writing mode that you can use rather than um yeah rather than uh the other writing mode which common sorry which just completely got out of my head common yeah so we're, we're sticking with common for the time being good 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 so we've looked at all those um if i just come out of this for a second and i'm going to show you a brief video guys um which hopefully um won't take too long so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come out of this i'm going to stop sharing my screen i'm going to share my screen um which yep oh actually uh let's not share share computer sound there we go okay so just give you this brief video um english music changing program to tactile music beta Okay, 41, 21. Bear with me. Uh, good. Control your device with your phone. So the main screen shows a list of the topics that you can choose. And it has alphabet, numbers, and words level one to five. And on the bottom, you also see favorites. On the app, you can uh, select to add to your favorites list so you can return to it anytime you want. And then there's also the music topic here and you can change to music using this as well. And underneath, this is a way you can add your own list, which is one of the most important features of the app. So how to add a new list? I'll click on the plus sign and then I can enter the list name I'll just move on from this slightly. L, L, O. Okay, I'll explain the, the word screen over here quick. There are a few off study mode, except this is in a tab form, so you can view it right away. So under the, the word, the letter, there are four icons. Over here, there are five I'll show you an example right here. I'm on G. G. And so I'm in trace and write. So I'm going to trace the word that's shown on the bottom and then copy the same pattern. And this would be the student using the device. And I press the circle button to check the answer. You almost got it. Oh, okay, something's wrong. You're so oh. close. Okay, so this is a nice way to uh, explain the slate and stylus option that's also in the practice set. Okay, guys, so I won't uh, carry on with that because you don't need to look at slate and stylus for the time being. Um, I just wanted to give you a brief live demo of, of how teaching mode works. Um, so that the app is paired there by Bluetooth. Um, and once the, the teacher's chosen the uh, the um, the word, the letter, the number, the activity, it will then be displayed on the on the refreshable the braille display for the student to, to work with. Okay. Um, now, I know we're almost about uh, done, Angus. Uh, we haven't looked at uh, music braille uh, yet. So if, if we have an extra couple of minutes, I'd be happy to, to go into that. Hi, Sam. Yes. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> it, the lighting's just gone a bit funny on your on your yeah. camera as well. Um, there we go. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've got, I've got a few questions um, and it seems that a few people want, would like you just to demonstrate music braille, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. Um, before we get into that, let's just answer uh, if you wouldn't mind just answering a couple of these questions. Um, so. Firstly, um, Carol would like to know, can you prepare teaching before the lesson or does the app only work live? That's a good question. Um, I don't believe within the app, um, Carol, that there are um, any sort of preparation um, tools. Um, I believe, yeah, you just have to, to use it live. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is very, very straightforward. I mean, 
you know, obviously, you, in terms of lesson planning, you can you can obviously use the app out of the lesson and and and, and pre pre preload the words. Um, you can create your lists, um, and then obviously just just run through them live with the student in the lesson. But yeah, there isn't any tools within the app for for lesson planning at the, at the moment. Um, but as I said, they're constantly adding updates. So that might be some good feedback that we can give to. Um... Definitely. Give yeah, to definitely. them actually about about adding that. Um, a great question. Thank you for that. Um, so the next question um, uh, from Andy. Um, is it just for letters, words and numbers or can you include simple pu punctuation? Another good question. But yeah, at the moment, there's no no punctuation. It's very much just yeah letters, numbers and short and long words. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Penny would like to know um, when you are in teaching mode. Um, sorry, I've just that's just disappeared. Yep. Okay, so when you're in teaching mode, does it shut off and stop the child going into self-study mode? Yeah. So while the app is paired, um, the, the student cannot um, exit um, teaching mode. As soon as the app is closed, as soon as the Bluetooth connection is lost it will automatically return to self-study mode. Okay, so as every teacher would like to hear, you have a fully captive audience. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, Manish would like to know, is the Taptio app free? Uh, is it, does it come with the unit? It is absolutely free. There is no cost at all. There's no subscription. Um, there's, um, yeah, there's three apps actually that, that Taptio have um, made. There's uh, this one, which is the older version, more basic, but does exactly the same. It's just in a different format. Um, this is Taptilo Plus, which is the newer version. And then there's Taptilo Store. This allows you to update the software on the device. Okay. So you'd go into here, you'd select your uh, Taptilo that will be listed because of the, the Bluetooth uh, connection there, <laughs> which I don't have. Um, and then you can add here, you can, you can actually add music braille you can download that onto the unit you can download um contracted and uncontracted which you know so we suggest having them all downloaded um anyway um but yeah this is the app where you'd, you'd update the software on, on the tackler okay um yep and that's all the questions for now so uh, i leave you to continue with the music sir good good thanks everyone for hanging on um i know we're running over slightly but um, yeah, so Taptilo Music, okay, which is just here. Now, Taptilo Music, this is um, sort of experimental in a way for uh, Overtech. Um, they've added this um, as a beta version, which basically just means it's, it's, um, it's only, you're only able to use this via the, uh, via the unit. You can't use this via the app yet, okay? They've put it on here to sort of test it really, to see what the feedback is. Uh, and so far, it's been unanimously positive. Um, but obviously, you're fairly limited in terms of, you know, what you can achieve as you've only got nine cells. Yeah, okay. So there's only one octave. Uh, for those that are familiar with music, regular music notation or braille music, um, there's only enough room, obviously, for one octave. Okay. Um, but it's in development. Um, and they're open for feedback. Um, but yeah, so if I was to enter it via the app, it would give me, uh, well, yeah, okay, it won't give me that option at the minute because it's not connected. It would then ask me to, if I want to connect to Braille Music, and then the, um, the Taptillo will actually um, reboot. It will play a really nice tune, um, which I'll show you in a second. I'm gonna show you another quick video clip. Um, and it's really, it's really well put together. It plays like all MacDonald, I think, to begin with. It takes the student into, uh, into the Braille music um, activity. Um, it's really fun, really engaging um, way of, of getting the student to, to, to look at, at basic music, uh, really basic music. Um, good. So, yeah, so we talked about that. It's, uh, it's, it's sort of in development. So... Yeah, because of its sort of develop, development phase, um, they don't have all the Braille music content. Okay, They have the music notes in, in, in one octave, in the fourth octave. Um, yeah, and obviously in, in, in music notation, there's many octave signs, etc. 
um, but for, for the time being, we're just using with one octave, okay? And there's three activities you can you can play in in uh, in, in Braille music. There's play a song, okay, which is very very straightforward. Um, old MacDonald had a farm, for instance. Um, it will it will Braille. It will sound the uh, song. You can trace and write it. You then obviously use the blocks to to trace it. Press enter, and it will it will then um, move you on to the next um, however many bars of the of the song. Uh, sol pitch, which some of you might be familiar with, some of you might not be. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. That's known as a that's known as a sol pitch scale, okay. Um, and there is the opportunity to 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 play around um, with a sol pitch scale. Um, you can um, and we'll look at that as well. It will braille so, and then the student will have to um, trace so, fa, sol, la, ti, do, and so on. Uh, and then compose, which is a really it's a really creative little game. It really allows the student to sort of have a play and you can you can braille whatever um, notes, music notes that you want on the uh, on the blocks there, press enter and it will play the, the, the student's composed um, piece of music. Um, using three instruments, the student can change between a piano, a bass guitar and a trumpet. Um, yeah, so it's a really nice little uh, little fun fun sort of uh, activity for the student to get to get excited about music. Um, good. Okay, so I'm going to show you now a um, a little video clip again. Okay, because um, yeah, I want you to sort of see the, the workings of of braille music because I think it's really exciting. It's really interesting. So just give me a second. I'll just find the video. That we were on before. Okay. Uh, yeah, good. Right then. So I'll just share my screen with you all again, you guys. Um, uh, yes. Good. 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 Okay. So this is uh, the, the video that I just want to show you. English. Oh. Sorry. I'm gonna have to start that again. Because I need to show. Oh, I'm sharing my audio with you. Yeah, that's fine. Just audio. That's that's the most important thing. Music. Changing program to Tactilo Music Beta. Okay, now it's going to restart to with Braille Music. Yeah, and in Braille Music, um, we, uh, since it's a beta version, we don't have all the Braille Music content in here. For well, example, we to only have, um, we have uh, the Braille notes, uh, we have the music notes in the fourth octave only. Um, okay. I know in Braille Music, there are octave, octave signs and yeah. um, all the different, yeah, it, it can get really complicated. Yes, but here can, we yeah. have one octave, uh, and this is because Taptilla has nine cells, and we wanted to kind of take the notes. When you're done, press the circle button to check the answer. If you want to listen again, press the circle button for two seconds. To skip to the next line, press the right arrow button. Are you ready to play a song? <laughs> Me, re, do, re, me, me, me. Okay, so in music, there are three activities. The first is play a song, which uh, the instructions just played right now. The second is solfage, and the last one is compose. And in music, it's slightly different than other activities in self-study mode because it goes in a linear mode, um, linear way. So once you finish one activity, it would automatically move on to the next one, so you can um, continue doing it. And so right now I'm in play a song. So on the Braille display, it shows um, the, the notes that just played in Braille. And this is the first line in, in a song, Mary Had a Little Lamb. So here are the, the buttons. Um, if you want to listen to the line again, then I can press the circle button for two seconds. And here, as in trace and write, I would trace the music notes that's on the bottom, and then using the blocks on the top, 
I would try to write the same notes. When I'm done, I'll press the circle button. Great. Okay, that, that, that's really good. So, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now, now it goes to the next line. So there are four lines in total, so you can learn the notes in an entire song. Yeah. And when you're done with this, you would go, it's, it's, skip to the previous activity or skip to the next activity. Definitely. And if you've got any more feedback while using it, we'd love to. Okay, guys. So I just wanted to show you that, just so you had a, a run through of Braille music. Um, that was actually, uh, you can see where I've got some of my content from for this webinar. That was actually a, a, a training session that we had, the company had with, with Overtech um, a few months ago. Um, yeah, they actually, um, you know, run us through all the all the, the functions and the features. And the Braille music is a really neat, um, you know, it's a really exciting little little activity. Um, and the compose, as I said, the compose feature is really creative. It really lets the students sort of, you know, have a play around. And um, and also, you can make the Braille music more complicated as well. Um, those of you that are familiar with with music Braille, um, um, which I'm sort of um, you know, um, I, I know very little, um, but from what I do know, I'm told that the first, the top four dots there are they obviously represent the note, uh, the music note, and the, the bottom two notes represent the length of the note. Um, so you can, um, you can sort of play around with uh, the length of notes as well. Um, you know, so that that sort of mixes it up and allows the student to to get even more creative um, as well. Um, so yeah, and just before I finish, um, that's pretty much all we've all we've got to cover, guys. Um, yeah, is oh, I, I talked about changing the instrument. Um, yeah, that that sort of in, in a nutshell is Braille music. Um, and yeah, we can take any questions, Angus. Great. Um, thanks for that, Sam. Yeah, I'm, we're really sorry, guys, that um, that the, the the Bluetooth um, on this device. Uh, was playing up for this session, which meant that we couldn't actually fully demonstrate uh, a couple of the features. Um, we, we we do welcome your feedback, though, uh, or anything that you that you think would be useful, or suitable to go back to to the manufacturers. Um, we work very closely with 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 all the manufacturers um, that we uh, provide solutions for. Um, you know, we have to um, because we train in them, um, and uh, and we, we we always want our, our teams to be very knowledgeable in them as well. So uh, um, we we welcome your your feedback because um, you know. You guys work with 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 students and and um, people uh, all the time that will be using this sort of technology. So anything that you think that the manufacturers need to add in there or or to think about, please please uh, you know let us know, put it in the chat, or or, or send us a, an email and and um, we'll be, we'll be very happy to pass that on. Um, what I can say is that most of the manufacturers are very um, open to, to 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 this sort of feedback, um, and uh, if if they think it's useful, they they will start to work on it. Um, there's a lot of development that happens with, with, with these devices, as, as I'm sure uh, you guys have already experienced. Um, so, uh, excellent. Uh, some feedback coming through already, which is great. Um, so, you can can just 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 a bit of clarification on this one, Sam. Can you um, create your own word lists? You can, or you can't create your own word lists in uh, with yeah. The so, so just by the the app, which I've still got on the screen share there. Um, yeah, you can create your own list. I've created my own here. Sam's list. I've got avocado in there. Add new word. Elephant. Train. Okay, and then that would be sent to the to the tactile on the on the braille display there. Um, sadly, at the moment it's it's not connected, so, so it wouldn't be. But you can choose between uncontracted or contracted. Um, you can also change the uh, the activity as well, but you can yeah you can add your own list. You can add as many as you want. Um, you can continue creating lists, and you can keep keep adding words. Um, and you can also add your favourites as well. 
Excellent. Thank you, Sam. Um, I've got a question from Sally. Does it recognize English spelling of words um, as opposed to American spelling? Yeah, so that is something that they have been conscious of, although it is an American speaking voice. Um, it's predominantly English spelling. Um, yeah, I've not encountered any words yet, like favourites or as one, isn't it, that's spelled um, slightly differently. I've not experienced anything, um, yeah, Americanized. Well, not yet. I mean, did you say, I think you talk about languages and you said it does uh, English, American, American English and uh, Korean. So, so would, would it relate to the, to the language? It's, it's, well, it's... I think from what, um, from what I gathered in, 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 in our training session is that um, although the voices at the minute, the pre-recorded voices are American English, uh, they have been conscious to, to address the uh, American vocabulary um within the activities um so yeah you shouldn't encounter any american words any american spelling okay great um apart from in, in the app itself of course because we've got favorites in the middle of the screen there exactly um but but the words the actual words that are used within it um, yeah, 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 should, yeah should be in the english spelling okay that's great yeah um give me a second while i just scroll through some more of these questions uh, is there a, uh, a sound clue or, or a sound no a notification to let you know when it, when it's finished resetting? Um, yeah, everything's, everything's, um, yeah, there's a lot of audio feedback. Um, so if it does reboot, the actual braille display itself, uh, completely refreshes all the dots, um, are, um, risen if you, uh, and then they'll, they'll, they'll deflate as well after that. Um, so they'll go back to, to being completely flat. And um, so you can hear it, it goes tick, 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 all the way along the display. And that, that's every time the device reboots. Brilliant, that's great. Um, uh, lots of really nice comments from people here. Thank you so much for these. Um, just, just reflecting and saying that it looks like a good piece of kit and, and thank you for the webinar. Um, uh, some good feedback as well that we can pass on. Uh, is Welsh Braille one of the language options? Jane has asked. No, Jane, unfortunately it's not. Um, but this, again, like Angus said, these are all things that um, can be requested. Uh, you know, if there's the demand for it, um, then then Tapsilo, I'm sure, will, will develop that. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, Joanne has asked about the American spellings, um, which we've We've, we've, we've already answered there, Joanne. So just, just, just to recap that quickly, um, it, it, it can be, although the, the app itself um, is, is set to, to certain spellings, like American spellings, as you'll see with favorites at the top there, the words within the app can, um, can, yeah. can, can be changed and, and, and will be changed to, to English spelling. English, um, yeah. Okay. Um, Ros, uh, Ros Williams would like to know, um, can you save the word list to the device to be sent home without the app? No, so I, I mentioned this earlier, but they, um, the, the self-study mode um, doesn't allow the student to um, have any, any sort of personalized word, to li word lists or favorite lists or anything. That's just teaching mode. That's just, just within the app. Um, self-study mode is, is simply just the, 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 the sort of basic activities, the read, trace and write, uh, dictation, um, write and gain. I think, really, yeah, there's no sort of favorite list. I think it's all random, it's all um, built in. Okay, great. Um, uh, yeah, some good feedback on punctuation. Um, this, this, all this feedback is, is really excellent, everyone. Thank you so much. There's so much coming through. I'm just trying to keep up. Uh, <laughs> um, sounds easy. Uh, and, and just uh, and decipher the questions so I can get those out there. Um, let's go. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank, thank you for that, Elizabeth. That's great. Um, uh, Jenny, uh, excellent. Okay. I think that's all the questions for now. Um, yeah, I'll, give it, I, I, I'll give it, I'll give it, two more we'll give it two more minutes just to see if there's any more questions that, that come through um 
but uh, just to wrap it up, you know, I want to say thank you very much for everyone for, for joining us today. Um, um, you know, it's, it's, it's great to, to see you here. We, 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 we host these sessions every 2 p.m. on, on a Thursday. Um, so if you can make it, that would be, that's, it's always uh, lovely to, to hear from you. Um, but uh, as we said, all our sessions are recorded. So uh, if, if you can't make it for any reason, um, you can generally find the sessions within a few days up on our YouTube channel. Um, you can also just email us directly on the uh, RNIB forum. Um, which is um, uh, which Julian is uh, uh, which Julian is the person that you would, that would email on there. Um, if you need any, any of our details, I'll, I'll put them in the chat as well for, for Sam if you want to talk to him directly. Um, and uh, and I think that's it. Um, I hope you're all well. And uh, thank you thank you again for joining us. Yeah, thanks everyone. And, uh, uh, oh yes, good good point, Joanne. Um, sorry, Sam. Just before we wrap up, so next yeah. next week's session, uh, next week's session will be uh, as some of you may know, it will be Stuart and Sam, um, and or it, it may be myself again with Sam, but it would it will definitely be Sam. You'll be happy to hear, um, <laughs> um, and it will be on uh, devices that are um, for magnification and speech or OCR. In, in the classroom. So we'll be focusing in particular on uh, a scanning pen, um, which is really good for, for blind and, and, vis um, and partially, uh, partial sight, um, but it's also really good for um, uh, anyone with any uh, reading difficulties or, or anything as well, so dyslexia or dyspraxia or anything like that. Um, and, also, and, and coupling that with um, handheld a handheld video magnifier or how those two devices can work together to offer magnification and speech. Um, so we'll be covering those next week and that'll be next Thursday at 2 p.m. Um, keep an eye out for um, our, uh, our, our advert, if you like, that goes up in, 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 the, in the forum um, via the, the Friday, I think it's the Friday email that sort of goes out and, 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 and advertises everything that from, from that's coming up in the next week. So um, we're, we're, we're always tucked in and amongst there somewhere. Um, so that should be in your in inbox tomorrow and uh, you'll, the link will be, will be in there and everything else that you need. Um, but if, if, you, if you ever need anything, of course, um, links, uh, recordings or anything, um, I'll, I will be putting uh, our details in there in the chat now. And uh, just please feel free, be, please feel free to, to email us at any time. We'll be happy to help. I'm going to post your uh, email in there now, Sam. You're just on mute, Sam. <laughs> yeah, you're still on mute for some reason. It was all going so well. Hey, hold on. No. There we go. There we go. Sorry about that. My, everything's slowing down. I think I've just sucked all the uh, the, the Wi-Fi out of the house. Um, but yeah, thank, just to reiterate what Angus said, thanks everyone for coming. And if you, if you do want any more information or um, if you want a closer look at the Tactila, if you want a sort of individual demonstration, then please do just get in touch and be happy to organise that for you. Okay, great. Um, let me just post your email address into the chat for everyone. There we are. And uh, yeah, thank you again, everyone, for coming. Uh, stay safe and uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. Great. Thanks, guys.